Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Um, this is Sam DeGangie, reporting for The Media Speaks, uh, themediaspeaks.com. Also, you can find me on The Correct Views and Facebook and on Twitter. I decided to name it The Correct Views. So you shouldn't have any trouble finding me. All right, um, here we go, people. On to the news. Phoenix News Times. Border Patrol agent steals blankets, provisions meant for immigrants, says no more deaths. When U.S. Border Patrol agents are not shooting each other or unarmed teenagers, they like to destroy water jugs in steel supplies left in the desert for crossing migrants. You know what? I think that's dirty. However, why don't I leave some food and water on my back porch for the person that's coming to rob my house? Do you know? I'm going to send this to, to immigrants. This is how you don't starve to death in our desert. You stay out of our desert. Leaving food and blankets for people that are coming here with the sole purpose of sneaking into the country illegally. They would not be dying in the desert if they would stay out of the desert. It reminds me of Kismet. Ever see the movie? If it is written that I shall die in Baghdad, then how shall I avoid it? By staying out of Baghdad, sir. Some things are just common sense. And it aggravates me to death. People talk about the sanctions that we put on Korea. Well, if Korea is such an independent nation, then why do we have to feed them to start with? Let them feed themselves. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry that the Border Patrol agents do that, but don't sneak into the country and you won't starve to death. Shazam, Sparky! Um, this is from thenewspaper.com. North Carolina, driving while nervous is not a crime. And I'm happy that they mentioned this, because it is good to know that there are still a few remaining laws from the ever-encroaching hand of the police state. The second highest court in North Carolina last week ruled the police had no business stopping a car because its occupants appeared to be driving while nervous. On April 15, 2011, tax day, well, who could be nervous? A pair of Sampson County Sheriff's deputies were running a high-speed trap, running a speed trap on Interstate 40, which should be illegal, when they noticed a green minivan, Corporal Bass and Pope each testified that the vehicle slowed from 73 miles an hour to 65 miles an hour in the 70 miles an hour zone, and that the driver and passenger stared straight ahead and appeared nervous as they passed. You know what? Thank God that this went in the favor of a thinking person. It is now not officially not illegal to drive while nervous. The reduction in speed standing alone could be examined in a number of different ways, including a normal apprehension that many people feel when approaching a law enforcement officer. Since they shouldn't be there doing it anyway, it is a breach and it is entrapment. Judge Beasley wrote, A nervousness, failure to make eye contact with law enforcement, and a relatively small reduction in speed is conduct falling within the broad range of what can be described as normal driving behavior. Based on the totality of the circumstances, it goes on, these officers lacked reasonable suspicion to initiate a traffic stop that resulted in the search and seizure of the weapons in this case. I've said it so often that I'm blue in the face, but I'm going to try it again. If a third of the driving population in any one state would simply band together and refuse to pay any kind of traffic ticket whatsoever, then the law wouldn't be able to do anything to you. The people that were ripped with the DUI are going to be the people that they find beds for. 
and they're not going to go ahead and be able to put your average going 50 and a 35 person behind bars because there will be too many of them. You would shut down the whole city to do that. If you lost a third of your drivers, your cooks, your cab drivers, your nurses, your doctors, you get the point. That's how we defeat this. Otherwise, we're left in situations where now the police want to pull you over for being nervous. And I wouldn't be surprised if a different state came out and said that it was illegal if North Carolina hadn't, pardon me, if North Carolina had not come to the rescue. Infowars.com, Rand Paul slams King Obama over executive order threat. Thank God, Paul Joseph Watson. Rand Paul, Rand Paul. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face again. I don't like the way that he treated Luke Rogowski when he was asking him questions pertaining to him um, getting behind Romney and Bilderberg. I also am not a real big fan of the entire way the family responded to the cheating of Ron Paul. However, Rand Paul is a patriot, and so far, minus a few things that really make you scratch your head, he's been on our side here, and we need to remain on his. And even though he's let me down a few times, this is why I think he's worthy of us can still, still very much considering Rand one of us. Let me know in my comment line what you think about this. Um, again, I'm doing Saturdays on the Media Speaks now, so I won't be doing as many weekend shows unless you guys leave me comments saying that you want the views on the weekends as well. As Barack Obama signaled that he would use executive orders to help carry out his gun control agenda, Senator Rand Paul slammed the president for acting like a, quote, king, usurping the Constitution and running roughshod over Congress. Very good. Speaking with CBS News, Paul remarked, I'm against having a king. I think having a monarch is what we fought the American Revolution over. How do you like that, Pierce Morgan? And someone who wants to bypass the Constitution, bypass Congress, that's someone who wants to act like a king or a monarch. That is wonderful. It goes on, I am responsible for the people inside this country. I couldn't justify it. If Obama passes this, it doesn't matter what he passes. The sheriff has more power than a federal judge. Uh, this is what Payman said. And uh, this is Sheriff Denny Payman of Jackson County. And he's going to refuse to enforce a, fe a gun confiscation program if one is ordered. This is important to note because I called the Sh Stark County Sheriff's Office, which is the county that I live in, in Canton, Ohio, and I asked uh, on his machine to return my call. Uh, I was asking if our sheriff is going to stand up for the rights of law-abiding citizens, and so far I haven't heard from him. Um, is it a question dodge? Who knows? Is he licking his finger and saying which way the political wind blows? I don't know. He could be in favor of it, uh, on our side, I mean, for all I know. But if you're living in Canton, Ohio, I started the ball rolling. Call the Star County Sheriff. See if he'll stand up for the Second Amendment, as I'm doing, as I'm trying to get you to do. And that's why I'm out here, people. That's why I'm doing the views. So please help support me in these things. And I will continue to do my best to help support liberty, plain and simple. Um, the last thing I want to get to... This is from uh, the Huffington Post. It's still good, though. Marijuana possession arrests exceed <clears throat> violent crime arrests. Now, I've said this a hundred times, too. I have DJed raves. I am a DJ at a nightclub for a living. Uh, I play in the band Passing Time. Uh, look up Passing Time, The Alexandrian Solution. That's our last EP. Um, never seen weed create great violence. Never seen weed be a problem at all. What I have seen it be is extremely expensive. And I'm not talking about it to buy it if you're going to smoke it. I'm talking about it buying it as in terms of worth taking out of our taxes to put nonviolent, mostly harmless people behind bars. Listen to this. Americans are, are shifting on marijuana. More than half of them think that it should be regulated like alcohol and cigarettes. 18 states have passed legislation approving it for medical use, and Washington State and Colorado have legalized it for recreational use. 
but it remains illegal under federal law. I want to stop for a minute here and mention what Gary Johnson said. You know how uh, Cal or Colorado is going to have other states uh, okaying this, don't you? When other states like Utah get sick of seeing people drive uh, over to Colorado to spend the weekend and get high, they're going to okay it too, which is good, because this is not something that the government has any point in telling you about. It's not up to them, whether you're for or against someone using it. You can't dictate your will onto other people. And as long as someone isn't harming you, it's none of your business. Goes on. And the arrests continue, one of every 42 seconds, and 86% of those for simple possession, according to the Marijuana Policy Project. In 01, marijuana possession totaled 663,032, 663, more than all arrests for all violent crimes combined. Possession arrests have nearly doubled since 1980, according to the FBI, while teen marijuana use was recently reached a 30-year high. President Obama said last month that going after recreational pot users in states where it is legal is not a top priority of his administration, which echoes a promise that he made in 08 not to interfere with states' medical marijuana laws. Since then, his administration has aggressively targeted dispensaries that are in compliance with state law because the dictator Obama does not believe in states' laws. He tends to agree with Adolf Hitler. No, I'm not saying that he wants to kill Jews. I'm saying the other side of fascism. Fascism doesn't have anything to do with killing Jews. Fascism has to do with corporate interests and big government issue, interests controlling everything. We have a United States for a reason. The federal government is not to be involved in these sorts of things. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you very much for doing so. Good night. God bless. Do me a favor. If you can donate to this show, when you donate to this show, I'm able to get better gear. I'm able to get, uh, I'm trying to get a better computer so that I can get my graphics and my theme music back up again. And that all depends on you. But when you donate to this show, the money does not go into Sam's, uh, Pimpin' account. No, it goes to the show. And I appreciate every penny I get from all of you who do donate. Thank you. Good night. God bless.